Hey scholars, hope you're well. It's Miss LaFire here again. Thank you for joining me. Uh, today we're going to be talking a little bit about Keith Haring and who this guy is and where he's from and what time period he was all about. Um, so Keith Haring is one of my favorite artists. Um, he has very simple designs, very uh, light, uh, fun, exciting, childlike images. Um, very easy to draw, oh, fairly easy to draw with practice. Uh, so here we have Keith Aaron chilling in a subway system and he's, um, his artworks right here. So we have graffiti and then we have tagging, right? And I want to talk about the difference between the two uh, very quickly. Let it be known that both of them are illegal without permission. So you need to make sure that you have permission before you do anything like that. So here we have a tagging. Tagging is where somebody kind of like represents who they are or, or what part of uh, town they're from. And, and so they come into an area and you may see this a lot in the city is people tag on walls or on, um, on bridges. And then we have this graffiti. Graffiti is, is similar to tagging, but it takes a lot longer to do. There's a lot of drawings. And then you also have uh, people who really spend a lot of time drawing their, their name. Um, in graffiti letters, uh, very similar to tagging. Once again, both of them are illegal, so you still need permission. Um, you might want to write a proposal. Ms. LaCroix went out uh, with the New Haven community a couple times at Lighthouse Park, and we've done some beautiful, beautiful artwork, but I had to, in order for me to do that, I have to ask permission, I have to give her a proposal, I have to tell them what I want to do, um, give them examples, and so they don't just hand off their walls or their property to anyone and just let them do whatever they want. They want to be very careful with that. Um, and so artist Keith Haring was born on May 4th, 1958 in Reading, Pennsylvania. He moved to New York City in 1978 and began using the city as a canvas, making chalk drawings and subway station. His art was eventually seen everywhere from public murals and nightclubs to galleries and museums around the world. Due to the style and location of Keith Haring's work, it became more accessible to people. He was also known for his activism in promoting AIDS awareness. Um, here's just one of examples of his artwork. If you notice, he has very bold lines, his uh, movement lines, some, some of you already know. He uh, frames his artwork out first, draws a nice rectangle, and then draws inside of it on some of his artwork. Um, Haring was fascinated with cartoons of art art of uh, Walt Disney, Charles Schultz, and illustrations of Dr. Seuss. As you can tell, these are three of his very, um, he, these are the three people that really inspired him in his life to do um, his art. And if you pay attention to his artwork and how we can relate it to the three, um, let's check this out. So here we have very childlike images, very round. So if we look at even Mickey Mouse has very round images. We have Charlie Brown. Um, he has very simple drawing and very, uh, he does have features though, right? And so, uh, but those images are very simple. And then we also have Dr. Seuss. If you pay attention to Dr. Seuss, we have these lines that are showing this guy popping out of the ground. Um, he, it, without these lines, it's gonna look like the guy's just hanging out there. But with the lines, it shows the movement of him jumping out, just like this. So if you took away these lines, it would look like these guys are frozen and not moving, which are cool. But with these lines, it kind of shows what? Right, like they're dancing, they're moving around, right? They're having fun. Uh, we also have some texture on the bottom. He did this a lot with just simple dots. This is a very simple uh, a horizon line. Um, and then very shape, very easy shapes. Does he have features on these? No, a lot of his, a lot of his artwork did not have features. Uh, Keith Haring's friend was, one of his Keith Haring's friends was Andy Warhol, um, who was an influence on his work as well. And you guys remember Andy Warhol, he did the Campbell soup cans, everyday objects. He started getting into doing everyday objects. Um, and one of the things that he did was, you know, as a friend, he went and created, this is Andy Mouse. The painting is called Andy Mouse. Um, and so he created this artwork um, to relate to Mickey Mouse, right? And Andy Warhol and Andy Warhol's work. So I want to see what can you pull out of these three images that actually are incorporated in this painting right here. Um, and so we have, here we have the money, right? You notice the money. This is something that he was well known for drawing. 
Um, let's look at him as a person. He's got the glasses. What else? His hair. Yeah. His nose. His mouth. Right? It shows you that it looks like Andy Warhol. And then we have Mickey Mouse, right? We have got the ears. What else? His arms, yeah. His pants right here, like Mickey Mouse pants. Even his tail. He's got a tail. And now what makes him look like uh, Keith Haring drew it? We've got the movement lines, right? Very round edges, bold colors, thick lines, right? So um, he, this is a really fun picture that he drew. It'd be really fun if you did one. I, I think I did that one of uh, the janitor at our school. Uh, Mr. Joe, I did one of him driving around, so that one came out really cute. Um, this is actually one painting, but multiple paintings within one. The cool thing about this video is that you can freeze it uh, so that you can spend some time looking at these images and get some inspiration. Uh, when Harry arrived in New York City, it was home to a thriving underground art scene. Harry befriended fellow emerging artists like Jean-Michel Basquiat, who shared his interest in the colorful art of the city streets. Harry and these other artists organized exhibitions at um, downtown nightclubs and other alternative locations where art, music, and fashion all came together in a dynamic mix. Here is Jean-Michel Basquiat. Mm, love him. He's an amazing artist. Um, Keith Haring, once again, good friends. They, uh, this is a Jean-Michel Basquiat artwork. Uh, the cool thing about his stuff is that it's very childlike, right? But then on top of it, kind of like a race, right? He just kind of piled on top of it. So he used paint and he used pastel and he used spray paint and he used rollers and he used brushes. He used so many different things, even his hand, his feet. Um, and he just got really into his art. So he also reflected a lot on um, information that he would read about um, in life experiences. Uh, super awesome. Uh, here's another picture of uh, Keith Haring in the New York subway station. And as you can tell, right, pay attention to what he's drawn. Here we have like an advertisement. Um, and then you have a blank uh, board right here because they would be like in the middle of switching over somebody would pay for an advertisement and they would put it up and in between it the background was black so here he is drawing with a chalk right on it so beyond the clubs Harry began using the city as his canvas uh, riding the subway he noticed black paper rectangles and empty advertising panels on station walls using white chalk he began to fill in these black panels with simple quick drawn pictures his signature images include dancing figures, a radiant baby, right? A uh, crawling infant emitting rays of light coming out. Um, a barking dog, a flying saucer, large hearts and figures with television for heads. These graffiti drawings attracted the attention of New York commuters as well as city authorities. Harry was arrested for vandalism on numerous occasions um, yes, he was, and you, um, you gotta watch out for that. Like, you can't, you know, be doing things like that, especially nowadays. Um, but when you have permission to do stuff, that's the amazing part, is that when you're trusted to do these things, um, then you're capable of being able to do it. You have a connection with somebody that you're able to draw these on. Um, also, some people have used, you know, their own house as a canvas with their permission, um, of, whomever uh, or you can just stick with paper and just be drawing on that here's some more images of him drawing you've got a payphone now uh, the radiant baby right there's a larger picture of it and you have nice bold lines no color right so thinking about doing that where um, something just very simple very thick bold lines Harry soon began to apply the universal recognizable imagery from free standing drawings and paintings. The imagery and optimism of his art with his bold lines and bright colors brought him popularity with a wide audience. 
He has his first solo exhibition in 1981 in Manhattan. Throughout the 1980s, Herring's work was exhibited widely through both within the United States and internationally. Uh, he also collaborated with other artists and performers. Um, always wanting to make his art more accessible, Herring opened up a retail store called Pop, The Pop Shop in New York City's Soho neighborhood in 1986. The shop sold posters, t-shirts, and other affordable items featuring Herring's signature designs. P picture, this is the pop shop right here. And picture this, the whole thing's painted white. And here this guy comes in with a very thick paintbrush and just paints these really cool designs on the floor and the walls, on the, these pillars right here. Um, so it's really cool. There was actually, uh, within the past few years, they were doing construction in New York and they were taking down walls and they ended up taking this wall and finding a, a room like this that was done by Keith Haring and they had to preserve it. Uh, super awesome stuff. There's probably tons of stuff in New York that we haven't even discovered. But if you ever drive through New York, you may have seen some of his figures because they're still in parks and they're still on walls. Um, over the brief span of his career, Haring completed more than 50 public works, including the anti-drug mural Crack is Wag which we're going to talk about in a minute, and a Harlem playground, and an illuminated animated billboard of his radiant baby image, image for New York Times Square. He also hosted numerous art, work, art workshops for children. Um, when he would go into high schools or he would invite high schools to public places to create, he would draw almost like a coloring book, right? And he would kind of like his drawings inside of here. And then he would have the students fill them in with either images or just plain colors, um, things that represented who they were. Um, here we have off of the FDR Drive, we have the Crack is Whack mural. So Crack uh, is Whack was created by Keith Haring. Keith Haring went and um, one of his friends was very ill. It was his artist apprentice, which means like a, a helper in a way. This guy helps clean up, set up. Uh, maybe mix paint, do things like that. And so he was addicted to drugs, he was addicted to crack, and uh, he wasn't getting the, the help that he needed and the support that he needed. And so Keith Haring was just getting very frustrated with the whole thing and he just wanted to tell people that like, drugs are not cool, crack is not cool. And so Crack is Whack came about because he wanted to do a billboard. We can't do a billboard, just climb up on top of a billboard. So what he did was he found this wall, which is one of those uh, handball walls in um, a playground where you can sit there and, and play. And he felt like this was important, an important message for children to know that, you know, drugs are bad. And so here uh, is a picture of him with his, his painting. Um, his, so he ended up doing this painting. He got caught doing this painting. Uh, the cop was like, do you have permission to be here? He was like, no. And he was like, okay, so you're do creating graffiti, which is illegal, right? Because you don't have permission. And so he was arrested. He ended up going to jail, coming out of jail. He had like a $150 fine. He was supposed to go to court. Ended up not going, ended up, uh, the whole community came together. They're like, he, but he had a really good message. Like, this is the guy that did this. And we think it's really important. Like in the meantime, while all of this stuff was going on, Somebody from the parks department noted it as graffiti, right? And so they went and painted over the entire wall. So now his mural's completely gone. Everyone's fighting for him. And then they end up like, I think he still had to pay his fine, $100, $150. Um, but then the parks department asked for him to come back and paint it over. And so he's like, yeah, sure, I'll paint it over, but I'm not gonna paint it the same exact way as I did before. So the first painting that he created is underneath the second painting that um, and with the assistance of the parks department, he was able to successfully complete that. This is on the other side of the wall um, that he created. And I want you to pay attention to his imagery. Uh, when we look at this image right here, right, you see this kind of like snake looking thing, monster going to eat someone. Maybe this is represented as the drug, as crack, and it's going after someone, right? And then we have these X's, like what is that? And how do you interpret this? Um, as X's being on, you know, the chest. Maybe these people are dying because of it. Um, it's not good. So 
Uh, this mural is actually still up. They continue to revitalize it and paint over it and keep it um, still looking the way that Keith Haring would want it to look. In 1988, Keith Haring was diagnosed with AIDS. The following year, he created the Keith Haring Foundation to support children programs and organizations dedicated to raising AIDS awareness. Pay attention, we have the uh, speak no evil, see no evil, hear no evil. This is something that was uh, created thousands of years ago and um, has continued to come back in different ways of art, and this is one of them, with Keith Haring. Um, here we have a large mural, and if you focus on this guy or, or the female, I'm not sure, it, this human, this human, is standing right here, and uh, you can notice the size of this mural and how lar large it actually is. And this is definitely something that he would have to have permission for because that would take forever to create. Keith Haring died in New York on February 16, 1990 of AIDS-related complication. He was 31 years old. His art is still exhibited worldwide, and many of his works are owned by prestigious museums with his deceptively simple style and its deeper themes of love, death, war, and social harmony continues to appeal strongly to the viewers. Uh, people still look at Keith Haring today. I was actually riding on my bike the other day um, in, um, on, uh, I'm gonna say Shelton Avenue, and there was a really cool box that had like information in it uh, for people to get, and there was Keith Haring actually written all over it. Um, really cool stuff. So here we have some more images of Keith Haring. All right, this is actually a sculpture. All right, so um, Amistad High School, went down with Amistad High School years ago, 2013-14. Um, these are some of my former students who are now in college. These are uh, some students, uh, uh, friends that I taught that are now in high school. Um, and so we ended up taking uh, New Haven and beautifying New Haven, but this was written. You had to write a proposal first and get permission from multiple people in order to do it. Then they funded it and paid for all the paint to do it and all the colors had to go through. It was like a huge process. It's not something that's small, um, but getting the community out and us working together to beautify New Haven. And if you go out there now, today, you'll still see these blocks. And, you know, eventually because of the salt water, they start to kind of wash away and the pace for us to come off. And so after a few years, you gotta go back and you gotta touch it up. So I've been doing that and still have to work on it some more. And so hopefully when this is all over, you guys can come out and help out. Um, but this is a part of um, a part of it. So here's a painting that I did, uh, I don't know, a couple years ago. And I was trying to just give an example of what, you know, is going on in the world right now. And uh, how could I, translate that into a Keith Haring inspired work of art. So here I have like Black Lives Matter, we've got Hands Up, uh, Don't Shoot, White Privilege, Upside Down, the equal sign, uh, Obama, we, we will miss you. So this is when ba Obama was still um, president, um, help, there's like a heart inside a broken uh, wall, can a spray can, why a clock, a band-aid, a peace sign, beware clowns, uh, blue lives matter, a uh, vote for Hillary, all question mark, love. So it's like a lot of information that's in here on a brick wall. Um, and I just trying to bring in that Keith Haring style into this. Um, and so this is just an example. And then I had other students, you know, creating this. And that's what I'm going to ask you guys to, to do. So here's some more examples of some Keith Haring, and this hopefully will inspire you by any means. Please like pause the video if you would like. Here we have some uh, seekers that you can purchase. There's lots of things that you can get of Keith Haring online. I got this t-shirt at, um, at um, Target, at Target. And uh, so there's, you know, he's, very, he's pretty popular, pretty popular guy. Um, so when I draw Keith Haring, um, a, a, a way for some people to actually draw him is if you can draw a stick figure, you can draw Keith Haring. Okay. So I would draw a stick figure 
and then you just simply draw around that stick figure and then erase the inside, all right? Just kind of like we do in our graffiti bubble block letters. So what I'd like to do with you right now is if you guys can grab something to draw with, if you need to pause me, go ahead and pause me. I get it. So I just drew, uh, here's a picture uh, that I drew. And I, we're gonna draw this one together um, just to kind of practice a little bit and get you used to this. And then you guys are gonna be good to be able to kind of create your own. You're just gonna have to practice. It takes time. Miss Acquire has been, you know, she's old. Shh, don't tell anyone. But I've been doing this for a while. Um, so here we go. So the first thing I wanna do is you, as you notice, here we have uh, the top. And the top, you can do like a heart, you could do the earth, you could do a circle, you can do whatever shape you want. For right now, we're just gonna draw a rectangle, make a sign. So we're just gonna draw a rectangle. Okay, so you have your rectangle. Now we're gonna do the head and it's right underneath whatever shape that you drew. So if this was a circle or a heart, um, so we're gonna go, up and around. Do not close off that circle. You're just stopping right there. Okay? So now we're gonna go, I'm gonna go out and up, you know, right into that sign. We're gonna do it to the other side. We're gonna go out and up. Now we're gonna come down and in, but we're gonna stop right about here. So if you wanted to go right underneath the neck and draw like a little dot here and a little dot here, and we're gonna go down and in right to that line. And then we go down and in right to that line. Nice, and then we're just gonna go line down, line down. Put a small line in the center. All right, and then we're gonna do the feet. So we're gonna go out and in, and then out and in. Looks a little weird, but that's okay. Uh, what line is this? Horizon line, yep, line out. Oops, on the wall. Line out. And then you wanna give him some texture right here. Just some dots. Very simple. And you could write whatever message you want that's inside of here. You know, something that's inspirational, loving, caring. You can also, like, it might be somebody's birthday. So you might want to make a birthday card and write happy birthday. Right? So that's a nice way of celebrating somebody's birthday. You can also add to it and you can change your designs around. So if you wanted to do a different design, you could do a different style. I'm going to share with you just a couple of examples all right some more examples the spaceship coming down um i'm going to be posting some videos down below so if you want to click on any of those links um i got a couple of keith hearing videos that i love watching um some inspirational things as well so that would be great you guys can watch those um so here's what's going to happen this is what you're going to do you're going to be drawing some sketching and ideas of what you want your final artwork to look like. So the first thing is you sketch. You kind of grab some old paper that you may have or something, kind of sketch some ideas. Don't do one large piece of paper, you do small ones. Uh, practice a few. Um, remember that you're only being influenced by his work, so you may alter or change, you know, and create your own style, which is important. Um, ideas, how could you draw an image that relates to where we are in the world today? You know, this is pretty crazy right now, right? Like, I've never experienced this. My, my parents never experienced this, our parents. You know, so what, how could we relate it to what we're, we're dealing with right now? And we can share that. Um, and then what are some um, images that represent your feelings? Love, family, togetherness, emptiness, or fear. You know, let yourself express yourself through this, through imagery rather than words, right? It's kind of, this is how we're kind of like struggling through this. Um, and then if Keith Hearing were to be here today, what do you think his artwork would look like? You know, what do you think um, he would be drawing in the community and and all over the subway system? I wouldn't be going into the subway systems, but maybe chalk drawings on the sidewalk, you know, like what would he be doing? Um, 
And then where can you draw? Like, do you have chalk? Do you have a dry erase marker? Can you draw on a window? Um, dry erase markers work on windows. Dry erase markers work on refrigerators, apparently. Um, and then they erase. Make sure you, you want to erase. Uh, but could you do something? Could you do something on your window that would reverse out and so somebody can see it? Inspirational words, things like that. Um, I would love to see your, your pictures. And then, um, so you want to make sure that you're keeping it clean um, and in the lines. If you're painting or drawing or coloring, you want to make sure that they're in the lines using multiple layers of color if needed. So if you're painting, you may need multiple layers or sometimes markers are almost dying. Make sure you push them on their side and then drag them across. Uh, I'm going to leave a link so you'll see an example of what I'm talking about when um, there's a, a video of someone drawing a Keith Haring. Pay attention to how they color it in with the marker. It makes it very clean. And then do you have uh, movement lines? Remember the movement lines are important because it shows this is animated. And then make sure your lines are thick and bold. So I might want to take my lines that I have on my drawing and just thicken them up a little bit or use a thicker marker. Uh, something thicker. So here we have some examples of what students worked on. This was at co-op uh, crunk until you're done. Um, here is, these aren't, weren't done when I took the photos. This was a uh, factory. What the student wanted to do was depict, because he's a, a, a vegan, a vegetarian, and he wanted to depict what it would be like if we switched and instead of the animals being processed and, and being killed and, and for food, we have the human beings that are being that. And then the animals are in the center, right? So you have the barking dog and the radiant babies that are out here um, and going into the factory. Uh, here we have, if we think about this, like what does this remind you of? Kind of cat in the hat, right? So someone took the cat in the hat idea. You got ears here and then the key herring images. Does this have movement lines? No, so what does it look like, right, when we don't have the movement lines? Just looks like they're just standing there with their ha hands raised. But if we do add those movement lines, that would kind of show a little bit more of an animation. Here we have um, a Keith Haring inspired. Now, once again, it's inspired by Keith Haring with the bold lines and then uh, the colors. but you know, the imaging and the, the, the people dancing isn't necessarily in this, but yet we can still see that it's influenced by Keith Aaron. Uh, this one, it says, uh, where's my head? So his head fell off and it says, hey, bub, over here. Very funny, uh, nice mouth going on here. And then we have missing the radiant baby, right? The brick wall. Uh, this one, the. This one was done by a student at Amistad High School years ago, and she said the, the image behind this was that she's tired of seeing people die. And this was something that meant a lot to her, and it was very symbolic of her. There's a lot of people in her life that continue to, to die, and she was, just tired. she was just tired of it. And um, it was a very deep painting. Here we have another one uh, where he used the figures, right? He used these figures and then also created this nice rainbow by repeating this pattern going all the way around. Um, so just a couple things, get a couple questions that you might be able to answer on your own. So what was unique about Keith Haring's work that makes him different from other graffiti artists? Uh, who is Keith Haring's best friend, or one of his best friends, right? Um, and then name two people that influenced Keith Haring and how his work is similar to theirs. And I'm pretty sure that you can pull these out of uh, the, the video if you were to watch it again or rewind it. Uh, that's the benefit of, I guess, videos, huh? Um, so I'm very excited. I'd like to see your drawings. I'd like to see what you come up with, if you guys can send... Um, me some photos of the work that you're working on. This isn't this isn't like a two second type of thing. Um, it does take time, and, and the more you work on it, the better you're gonna get. And if we can use chalk or maybe different mediums, or maybe you can find other things to actually do a 3D sculpture. We have 3D sculptures out there of these Keith Haring figures. Um, I would love to see what you guys come up with. Um, this is really exciting, and then how. 
how it relates uh, to Keith Herron's work. Okay, so it was very nice for you guys to stop by. You are much uh, appreciated and I will see you soon. And don't forget, like click on the links below, see, um, you know, what kind of videos that you like watching. And I think the more you're exposed to with these videos, the more your ideas are going to pop up in your head. Okay. So it was very nice seeing you. Have a wonderful day. Love you. I'll see you soon.